You know something that I never explain? Oh, I'm audio, and this is my glorious channel. Um, I never explained this icon up here in the top left, and I'll do that in the next section of the game. So don't worry about that. It's really not that important anyway. Um, maybe I did explain it. Oh, well. We're going to fight Akito. <laughs> um, that I know I haven't explained fully, though I've gotten close. Um, this whole part's going to be Akito, basically, and all the dialogue that comes after the fight with him. There's a lot, because the game transitions a lot. You know, it goes from, hey, we're at a school, to, hey, we're taking over a city. So, it's, uh, there's a lot to read. Um, a lot, a lot to learn. Oh, shit, I don't know what noise that was, but, uh, um, <laughs> oh, boy. Um, a lot to learn in the next part. I'll have to go over some of the economical things with the game, um, though they're not really important. Um, anyway, this fight's coming up here, and, you know, we're fighting Akito to get his student button from him. More or less. Um, and that's where he gets his power. And once you defeat him, it becomes an item. And you can equip it to whoever. Uh, every power in the game yields a button when you defeat them. Um, well, later on, in the next section of the game. That's not the case, but here it is. And I don't know why Akito has one of these. Um, it's really strange that someone so meaningless almost would have something of such importance. Um, the buttons, though they haven't gone over it, you know, the other classmates didn't know. Heita and uh, Sane didn't know what the button was. But it's really important to the story of the game. And that's why Rogue is here, because you're not really a Boncho until you've gotten one. Um, I mean, Bonchos exist without the buttons, but they're shit. So, that's what's up there. And they all call Rogue an eggplant head. Don't know why, but uh, we're getting into the deathmatch, so I'll go over that later on. You know, when any of the other characters bring it up, there are several. Um, yeah. Rogue is a powerful dude, and you're going to see why. And this music that's about to start is amazing. This is by far the best track in the game, and you're not even going to hear it all. You're just going to get this taste. You're just going to get this taste. I'll play it all out later on, because this plays in all the big fights in the game, and it's great. But uh, you can see here Akito's fighting, and his ability is Severing Darkness, which raises his counter chance to 100%, and uh, he doesn't usually miss with that but he'll always get a hit in, um, and it stays that way. You can't really dodge him, but that's the fight. It's That's all that anyone does when you do the deathmatch. It's not hard, and I was kind of puzzled at why it existed <laughs> the first time I did it, you know? Like, oh well. But things like that deathmatch exist because this game is still an aroge. It's still a VN, you know? You're supposed to be reading it and enjoying it for that, and there's also gameplay, you know? So, just remind yourself that when you're like, geez, that was really simple, what am I doing? I had to click two buttons to beat this boss, you know? There was no other outcome, it could only end that way, why did I play this? It's it's just for a change-up, you know? What's more interesting, doing that little combat sequence or just reading about it? I hope you have your answer, but... Roga beats the fuck out of this guy, and uh... That's all you'll see of Akito for a while. Um, until the last section of the game, you won't see any more of him. But A little bit about Akito. Um, that ability he has, I mentioned, it's called Severing Darkness, and it raises his counter chance to 100. I think it lowers his evasion to 0, and uh, it increases his power a little bit. It's a weird ability, but it's a good one. Uh, yeah. It, once you, uh, if you choose to recruit Akito later on in the game, it's pretty much all you'll use with him. Um, yeah. But, I guess there's not really that much more to say about the guy. <laughs> I was hoping maybe there would be, but there's just not, so that's how he goes. Um, post how old you think Akito is in the comments or something, because I still think he's maybe even younger than Roga. I don't know. He's... I just keep going back and forth with his age. He looks so... 
weird to me. I don't know. I mean, Sane looks like she's older than him, probably just because he's such a fucking idiot, you know? He's so stupid. That's why he looks so young. To me. But, uh... Yeah, this goes on. I'm not really sure what else to say about it. <laughs> but, uh... Akito understands that he lost, and that's all there is to that. Um... Like I said, this is mo it's all actually dialogue after this, until it goes to the next section of the game. Um... Yeah. But... That next section of the game is gonna be great. I guess I can go over it a little bit here. Um... Once it starts out, you have a territory. Uh, it it opens up and there are territories. You're not taking over rooms anymore, you know? Um, and you have your territory. I think it's Tokyo. Or, I don't remember. But, um, and you're surrounded by enemies. You're just surrounded on all sides by enemies. And there are two primary schools. Um, forgot their names. <laughs> Itagawa and, uh... I, yeah, I don't recall the other one, but you have to essentially choose between which one you want to take. And I already mentioned I'll be taking Itagawa to enter Kunagi's route. You take the other one if you want to enter Senna's route. And uh, I'll go over each one's parameters once that starts up. But uh, you can end the next section of the game very quickly, or you can spend some time in it. Uh, I'm not sure what the time limit is in the school phase, but the next section of the game must be completed within 25 turns, or you get a game over. Um, that's f straight from the wiki. I haven't experienced it myself. So, that's how that works. But, um, I'm fairly certain Kunagi turns back into her human self here. Uh, well, maybe not in this scene, but you don't use her as a wolf anymore. Um, which makes me happy. But,. You know, I really enjoy seeing adult Kunagi. Because you see it so rarely. Folks, savor this CG of her because you won't be seeing it very often. <laughs> um, I don't think you've seen Lolly Kunagi hardly at all, and that's what she is throughout the game. I, I really like her attitude. She's very sarcastic and closed, you know, emotionally closed. Um, yeah, but not not emotionless, you know, not soulless. I mentioned in a Sengoku Rents video that I hated people like Ayanami Rei and Nagato Yuki, and Kunagi is not like them. There's a huge difference. You can bother me about this, and I'll fucking debate you about it if you want. I don't do anything, so I've got the time. But I like Kunagi. Senna, the other girl that we have yet to meet, is kind of ditzy, and... I mean, she's not stupid. Fuck it, I'll explain it when we get to her, because I'm gonna just paint a really bad image of her for you guys. <laughs> and you're gonna either think I'm stupid for explaining it so poorly, or you're gonna think that she's stupid, because that's how I explained it, and that's not right. So we'll wait. But, uh, this is Lolly Kunagi. <laughs> and, uh... I prefer her adult form because I haven't seen it as often as I've seen her lolly form. That's how that goes. And uh, again with the eggplant head. I I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Maybe it was a choice, you know, on the translator's end. Maybe they just chose, hey, eggplant head. We'll call him that because there's not a proper translation for what they're calling him. Or maybe it's a pun on his name in Japan. Or maybe it's a pun on his hairstyle in Japan. Or maybe he looks like an eggplant, and I'm the only guy outside of the loop, you know? I don't know. No one calls his brother that. But, yeah. So, a little bit more of this. Actually, a lot more of this. <laughs> uh, hmm. Yeah, you're not going to want to recruit people from the school anymore at this point either. Once you've done this in the game... Um, in the next stage, you have, you know, in, during the region phase, which is the same as the region phase here. I interacted with rooms. In the region phase, in the next section of the game, you'll interact with 
sections of the town. You don't really want to pull students from the school in that section of the game because their loyalty will be different. Um, and I will go over loyalty eventually. So that's how that goes. Um, but yeah, everybody's here on the field getting ready to roll. I guess, you know, I mean, oh, and uh, different people gather here for, you know, who you recruited. Obviously, Barai's not going to be here. I didn't recruit him. Um, but yeah, those 622 students it just mentioned are irrelevant. Um, you can't recruit 622 people ever. And, um, yeah. I don't know. They don't, they don't help you with anything. They don't. They're just kind of there. But. Here, Roga explains his goals to the students and his friends who didn't really know about his goal. Um. I really was, you know, again at this stage in the game, I was like, really? Really? We just took a school, now we're going to conquer Japan, Roga? Is that really what you're trying to do here, buddy? And I was kind of just looking at it. I, I didn't know. I didn't know how to feel. I was skeptical about the game's story when I started playing it anyway. But, um, yeah. Uh, also, B-Stones. I should mention those now. They're basically the currency in this game. We'll be seeing more of those in the next section when they become a huge issue. But they're related to B-Powers. And uh, there's this thing called a hellhole in Japan. Uh, not, like, it's a huge plot point. Kind of the pinnacle of the game, so to speak. But they don't really mention it much until later. Um, the hellhole is how everybody got their B-Abilities. And it's a big deal. It's a big deal. And they just don't go over it, you know? A lot of the issues that I have with this game's story would be fixed if they covered some shit earlier on in the game. Um, yeah. But there you go. The lovely Gochan. Um, he's talking about the other people here. The PGG, National Protectors, Nightmare Eyes, and Kyushu. He just gives it a general term. Those are the people you've got to conquer. Those are the huge groups later on in the game that you conquer. Um, they are... Like, and this, the Civil War in Kyushu. They mention all of this shit, but you have no idea what it is. And it's really worth it to replay this game when you do know what some of the shit is. Um, yeah, but it's kind of giving you something to look at. Like... Here are the people we'll be fighting. Look forward to it. We're going to take them out. You know, the PGG, you remember because it's an abbreviation. I don't know what for. And you remember Nightmare Eyes because it's fucking stupid. Who calls themselves that? They're vampires, by the way. If you hadn't lost hope in the story direction of this game, there's a faction of vampires. But, you know, the story's okay. I'm just... I'm not sure what I'm doing, but, you know, it's all good. But, uh, yeah, if it wasn't really for Go, you wouldn't even know what those higher powers are. And to be frank, I, dis I discarded that knowledge when they gave it to me right away. I was just like, eh, and threw it to the side, but... You know, if they're not fighting me, if they're not killing my people, I'm not worried about who they are, right? Um, but Rogue is a motivational guy, and, you know, that's one of his similarities with Rance. Optimistic, does what they want, I suppose. Nothing's stopping them. Death is a surprise to those two. And that's really the only comparison I can offer. But, uh... This is a pretty good scene in the game. I have to be honest, I like this a lot. And it's another thing that I like a lot in uh, Daibancho. Um, it offers the perspectives of other characters frequently. Um, right here at the beginning of the game, Roga gives this rally, you know. And you get these students here, and the people you've recruited giving their opinions. They're like, yeah, I'll do this. 
and I really, really like this a lot. And I'm very happy to say that the game ends in a similar fashion. Um, it just feels cool to me, you know? It's like a bunch of people uniting to do something. You know, all for their own thing. They all have their own reasons to do it, but they're still doing it. And it's really cool. I just think it's awesome. And Heita is just so cool. Yuki, and eh, Yuki's forgettable to me. Heita is not. But, I mean, even though it's one line of dialogue from these people, I like it, I appreciate this. A lot. So. There you go. And, uh, you're a pain. Tomari, he's a pain. But, yeah. So... That's pretty much the first stage of the game, folks. Uh, we still have a lot more text to go through, but that's the first, that's the tutorial of the game. Once you've gotten through this, you've beaten the tutorial. Uh, and it starts to really get interesting after this point. I've got to be honest. Um, this school section was a little uninteresting, <laughs> mostly because of the content. You know, you can only do so much, but... You know. And this here. Ugh. Ugh. I mean, this isn't good. What they're doing here is not good. And typically in storytelling and novels and films, this isn't done for a good reason. Um, it leaves the, the viewer, you know, the person involved, it leaves them alienated. They just did this great thing. You just took over a school... You're hyped to start taking over the rest of the country, and all this is great, and then you're given this random scenario with people you don't know or care about, and they aren't related in any way to you. That's not good. Um, but because I'm here talking, I can relate them to you. Um, these two ninjas, their names aren't important. Um, they belong to the NPI, the National Protectors, a faction way later in the game, the largest faction in the game. They're a big deal. They're basically keeping peace in Japan, or trying to. Um, they're, they're kind of the good guys until you show up, you know? Well, they have Senna with them, the other heroine in the game. And they have her with them because she is what is called the Priestess of the Seal. And you don't find out about any of this shit until way later on. And only if you're in Senna's route, really. Um, the Priestess of the Seal is a character inside of the game used to keep the hellhole sealed shut. It suppresses it so that no demons can get through it, right? Well, they have her. Uh, I don't think they talk about why, really. But she's really strong. Senna's a really strong woman. And, you know, the hellhole has been around for a while... And they always need a priestess of the seal. So they continue to kill girls like Senna and take her spirit and put it in a clone. And they, I don't, I'm not sure what they were doing here. I'm not sure if they were trying to dispose of her or whatnot. But it goes differently than they had intended. And that's, that's a lot of important information that I just gave you guys. Because you can't find out about it. And if I had known some of those things, I would have liked Senna more, you know? I would have liked this scene more. I would have appreciated it at least a little bit. But she gets, you know, she breaks free and she goes on a rampage, kind of. And, you know, the scenes will play out and Roga finds her and treats her nicely and calms her down. She joins your army. Um, but yeah, uh, that's how that goes. <laughs>